This is B2 English and the story is called Sophia's Quest Sophia's Quest for the Hidden Treasure Sophia, a humble weaver from a small village had always dreamed of something greater She spent her days weaving intricate tapestries but her mind wandered to distant lands and uncovered adventures one day while working in her shop a stranger walked in and handed her a mysterious map the map he said led to a hidden treasure buried far beyond the mountains Sophia's heart raced this was her chance to find the adventure she had longed for. Without hesitation, she packed her bags, said goodbye to her village, and set off on her journey. Along the way, Sophia encounter encountered countless challenges. She hiked through dense forests, crossed raging rivers, and climbed steep cliffs. There were moments when she wanted to throw in the towel, but something inside her told her to keep pushing forward. As Sophia journeyed deeper into the unknown, she met people who taught her valuable lessons. A wise old woman, woman in a remote town told her, the real treasure isn't something you find. It's something you discover within yourself. Sophia pondered these words, but she couldn't shake the thought of the treasure. Finally, after months of travel, Sophia arrived at the place marked on the map. But instead, of a chest full of gold. She found a mirror. As she looked into it, she realized the truth. The treasure was the strength, wisdom and courage she had gained throughout her journey. Sophia returned to her village, not with riches, but with something far more valuable self-discovery and deeper understanding of her own potential and that is Sophia's quest for the hidden treasure not made of gold but just herself Sophia's quest for the hidden treasure what do you think Are you disappointed that it's not a chest full of gold? Or do you understand that the real treasure is within? Hmm. We are going to learn some of the vocabulary from this story. So, you have to make a choice right this second. Do you want me to do the story one more time? Or do you just want to go to the vocabulary? Which one do you want to do? Go to the story, do the story one more time, or go over the vocabulary? Yes, Elizabeth is not an answer. <laughs> vocabulary or story? Most people are saying one more time, but I also hear vocabulary. So, not to keep you waiting. Wow, thank you for all the gifts. Pa, pa, pa. Thank you so much. Yaya, yeah, yeah, Carol, thank you too for supporting our English learning community. Thank you so much. If you're looking for the text to speech, 
where you can write a message to me, say it out loud, learnwithlucas.com. There's a big bright button. What we are going to do, thank you Valeria, is I will read the story one more time, but I will read it faster. I will read the story one more time, but I will read it faster. Okay? Thank you for the coffees. Appreciate you. Cheers, Wa. Making it to the number one position beside Blue, of course, in the sub gang. Cheers. Ooh. A little faster. It's gonna be easier for me now because I read the story already. I will read it faster. And to help you out, guys, because I will read it faster. I'll give you the story right this second. In Telegram, in Discord, I'll send you the story. If you want to read with me, you can. If you want to read it with me, you can. Check the learning content. I will share with you the story. So if you want to listen while I read, go ahead. Go ahead. I will give you 30 seconds to do that. And I will do the story one more time. Because there are some difficult words in this story. And if you want to join Telegram, Discord, go to learnwithlucas.com. You can join us right there. It's a free English learning community. Free group. Join about almost 5,000 other people. And cheers to you. Thank you for being here. All right. Here we go. One more time. This is B2 English with idioms and phrasal verbs. Listen up. Without music, apparently. The music just stopped. Okay. Here we go. Sophia's quest for the hidden treasure. Sophia, a humble weaver from a small village, had always dreamed of something greater. She spent her days weaving intricate tapestries. But her mind wandered to distant lands and discovered adventures. One day, while working in her shop, a stranger walked in and handed her a mysterious map. The map, he said, led to a hidden treasure buried far beyond the mountains. Sophia's heart raced. This was her chance to find the adventure she had longed for. Without hesitation, she packed her bags, said goodbye to her village and set off on her journey. Along the way, Sophia encountered countless challenges. She hiked through dense forests, crossed raging rivers and climbed steep cliffs. There were moments when she wanted to throw in the towel, but something inside of her told her to keep pushing forward. As Sophia journeyed deeper into the unknown, she met people who taught her valuable lessons. A wise old woman in a remote town told her, the real treasure isn't something you find. It's something you discover within yourself. Sophia pondered these words, but she couldn't shake the thought of the treasure. Finally, after months of travel, Sophia arrived at the place marked on the map. But instead of a chest full of gold, she found a mirror. As she looked into it, she realized the truth. The treasure was the strength, wisdom and courage she had gained throughout her journey. Sophia returned to her village, not with riches, but with something far more valuable. Self-discovery 
and a deeper understanding of her potential. Sophia's quest for the hidden treasure. Far more valuable. And if you wonder, guys, I don't know if you notice, but I am reading the story while I'm looking at you. This is called front reading. So I try to read the whole sentence before I say the sentence, which gives me time to look at you so you feel like we're co connecting. This takes pra practice, guys. The more you read, the better you get at doing this. It's also because this is the second time. Maybe you noticed that the first time I'm more focused on the text, but the second time I have the text in my short term memory so I can jump back and forth. Practice makes perfect, especially if you read out loud. When you read out loud, it's much easier because you're also listening to yourself while you read. That's a little hint. So, let's learn some of the vocabulary from this story. I already shared the story in our Telegram community and in a Discord community, so you can read it right now. Listen, new vocabulary. Let's start with a very important word, humble, humble. Guys, what's the meaning of humble? H-U-M-B-L-E. Humble. I am Dutch, correct. What's the meaning of being humble? Knee hat. Congratulations. Very fast. Humble, guys. H-U-M-B-L-E means to be modest. Yes, to be modest. Or low in rank. If you're not in an important position, you can also call your position humble. So for example, um, if you're HR in a big, big company, you have a humble position, right? Low in rank. Yes, you're not a boss, you're not a CEO, you are just on a normal uh, position, a humble position, which is important for the company. Yeah, humble, like low key, like low key. Yes. For example, uh, he came from a humble background, but achieved great success. A humble background is the way you were raised, not in riches, but in a humble background. Well done. Well done. Now there is a job in this story. Sophia is a weaver. What is a weaver? W-E-A-V-E-R. Weaver. This is a job. Maybe it's not a job these days, but it used to be a job. She makes carpets. Yes, kind of. Probably also make carpets. Sure. A weaver, guys. Weaving. Weaving. A person who makes a cloth by interlacing threads. So people who make carpets, who make curtains uh, by hand. That's a weaver. W-E-A-V-E-R. These days it's machines, but long ago, not that long ago, <laughs> it was an actual job. <laughs> Weaver. The weaver created beautiful tapestries with her skilled hands. A weaver. You could call being a weaver a humble job. Yeah. All right. A nice English word. Wonder. W-A-N-D-E-R. To wonder. This is a verb. To wonder. What is the meaning of wonder? Someone who makes fabrics with by hand. Yes, by hand. Mm -hmm. To ask myself, 
no, not in this case. Not in this case. Remember, she often let her mind wander during long days uh, at work. She often let her mind wander during long days at work. Oh, to look up could be to wander. You can wander to different places. Wandering, guys, is to move around without a clear direction. Without a clear direction. You're just strolling around, wandering around, not really going somewhere. To wander. To wander could also mean, when it's about your mind, it could also mean to dream about something. To wonder about something. W-A-N-D-E-R. Yes, you can be thinking deeply. Absolutely. All right. A phrasal verb. I think we had this phrasal verb last week. To set off. S-E-T-O-F-F. -F, double F. To set off. What's the meaning of to set off? Wonder. In this case with the letter A. A wandering mind is with an A. To set off. To start, exactly, to begin a journey, to start a journey. Well done. She set off early in the morning to catch the sunrise. She set off early in the morning to catch the sunrise. To go. R well done, Rania. All right, number five. To throw in the towel. To throw in the towel. Idiom. Nice English idiom. I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. To chicken out, ska ska. Maybe on a challenge day, yes. <laughs> to throw in the towel, my friends. Of course, meat. To give up. To be done with it. I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. I can't handle it anymore. Like, in this story, she thought about throwing in the towel, but she didn't. To quit. Yes, to throw in the towel. After failing the exam twice, she almost threw in the towel. Number six out of ten. Instead of throwing in the towel, she kept pushing forward. She kept pushing forward. What does it mean to keep Pushing forward. I cut you off, Dua Lipa. Does Dua Lipa use idioms in her story? In her songs? I didn't know that. Might make sense. That might make sense. Sure. Yes, to exert best effort. Oh, beautiful English, Merful. Beautiful English. To continue, Dida, yes, to keep doing Skaska specifically, guys. Keep pushing forward to continue despite difficulty. When you keep pushing forward, there are difficulties you push through. So when things are very easy, you don't you are not keeping pushing forward. You're not pushing forward because there's no difficulty. When there are difficulties, you keep pushing forward to keep on going, to keep pushing forward. Even when the path was hard, he kept pushing forward. Despite difficulties, to keep on going, to keep your head up. Yes, Blue, that's the same. Keep your head up, keep pushing forward is kind of the same thing. The difference is keep pushing forward is the action to keep your head up is mental, is your mentality. Like in your head, you're not giving up to keep your head up. Well done. Number seven, raging. R-A-G-I-N-G, -G. raging. 
I think you know what it means if I say it like that. What is the meaning of raging? R-A-G-I-N-G. Sahila, thank for the heart. Strong, angry. Well, not just angry. Otherwise, they would have said angry. Raging is intense anger. Intense, very strong anger or violence even. Violent, violence. They had to cross a raging river to reach the other side. Raging, R-A-G-I-N-G. Six letters. They had to cross a raging river, a violent river. It's not just a nice little stream, you know, it's <laughs> raging rivers. Scary. <laughs> Number eight, to ponder, P-O-N-D-E-R, P-O-N-D-E-R, to ponder, guys. What is it? To ponder over something. A raging river. A raging river. Furious, yes. Fierce, yes. To ponder, P-O-N-D-E-R. You got it. To think. But not just to think, like Dida, Sammy, Blue, and Nihan are saying. To think carefully. To think carefully or deeply about something. Like you're really, really thinking about something carefully and deeply. Pondering. To ponder. Pondering. I'm pondering if I should do a live stream on Thursday. I am not pondering that because we are doing a live stream on Thursday. I'll tell you after the vocabulary. Number nine, to contemplate, exactly. To ponder is a synonym for to contemplate. <coughs> <coughs> My voice is breaking. Hello, voice. A-O-E. <coughs> All right. Number nine, to shake the thought. To shake the thought. Genevieve, you think that's funny? <laughs> to shake the thought. T-H-O-U-G-H-T. Thought. Your thought. Your thinking. To shake the thought. Well done. Like Taylor Swift. To shake it off, guys. To shake it off. To shake it off. But this time to shake the thought. To stop thinking about something. To stop thinking about something. I'm shaking the thought. He couldn't shake the thought of what had happened. He couldn't shake the thought of what had happened. To shake the thought. Nice, right? That's a nice one. How about number 10? Maybe the most important one. Number 10. The last one, self-discovery. Self-discovery, guys. What's the meaning of self-discovery without using the word discover? Don't use the word discover. To shake the thought is not to change your thoughts, Jungle Da Pang Yao. It's to say bye-bye to the thought. To stop thinking about something. What's the meaning? of self-discovery, to find out who you are, to know yourself, to be conscious about yourself. Beautiful English, guys. Well done. Yes, to learn about oneself, often through experience, because discovery shows experience. So learning about oneself, often through experience. Thank you for the gifts, Jungle the Bang Yao. Often through experience. Well done. That's it. Those are 10 
new vocabulary words. I'm going to repeat every single one for you right after I thank Lifa for your subscription. Thank you so much for your subscription. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Now, let's review all the words. You can simply repeat after me. I will say the difficult word, give you time, say the meaning, give you time. Easy, right? This is how it works. I say humble. You say humble, which means modest. Modest. A weaver. Weaver. A person who makes a cloth. Yes, a cloth as in sheets or tapestry or curtains, anything like that. Wonder. Wonder. To move around without a clear direction. Yes, without a clear direction, which means you don't really know where you're going to wander. Set off. To begin a journey. To begin a journey. Throw in the towel. To give up. To give up. Keep pushing forward. To continue despite difficulties. Exactly. Raging. raging, which means violent or intense, not region, raging, R-A-G-I-N-G, -G. raging, which means violent or intense, ponder, to ponder, to think deeply about something. To think deeply about something. Deeply, especially. Shake the thought. To shake the thought. To stop thinking about something. Yes. To stop thinking about something. And the last one, self-discovery. Self-discovery. To learn about oneself often through experience. To learn about oneself often through experience. And that, my friends, is B2 English.